This episode of Total Drama Reviews contains clips from Total Drama Action. I do not own Total Drama Action. All rights go to Fresh TV. Remember to be civil and do not be me in the comments. Seriously, it can get really messed up. Carpe diem, my name is Ultranatic, and this is Total Drama Reviews. This is where I, as a lover of animation and reality shows, look over the show and combine them together the best. And the episode we'll be looking over today is entitled Beach Blanket Bogus. Yep, we're tackling the beach movie genre today. Of course, satirizing all the great beach movies, like, uh, like, uh, I've never seen a beach movie in my entire life. Or, not one primarily set on the beach, at least. I've seen movies where scenes are set on the beach, but otherwise my knowledge of beach films is practically non-existent. The most I know comes from an excerpt from Big Time Beach Party. But if they make the episode simple enough, I'm sure people ignorant to the genre like myself could follow along easily. So will this episode catch the big wave or completely... <laughs> Wipeout. Well, grab your sunscreen and beach towels. This is Beach Blanket Bogus. We open the craft services tent where the contestants all interact in various ways. For one, there's Lindsay and Beth fine over Justin. I brought you bacon. I brought you bacon. Tofu's good for your heart. Pig's good for his hair. Holy crap, I love his hair! As well as the subplot where Beth makes a lot of friendship bracelets, but is too shy to give one to Justin. If only making friends with a guy as gorgeous as Justin was as easy as making these bracelets. I'm um, sure Beth means well, but I stopped being a fan of friendship bracelets after Big Brother 19. Paul now has the power to keep eight house guests safe by giving them a bracelet. What will it take to win him over and get one of the coveted bracelets? You want to know the key to my friendship? Give me some Brie. Your boy likes his Brie. You can't promise me safety and loyalty because you're lying. But giving me a cheese sandwich, that's 100% facts and friendship. I state this as a bona fide brony. That guy has zero respect for the concept of friendship. <laughs> Real mature. Don't you know it's bad luck to spill salt? <laughs> Nothing a little pepper won't fit. <gasps> Okay, that's just hilarious. Are uh, you still gonna finish those eggs, bro? Are you nuts? Now I only have eight pieces left. Am I nuts? Dude, you are officially capital W weird. Which is good, because I happen to really like weird. There, now you've got seven pieces, which is an odd number again. Isn't that kind of better? Absolutely. Huh, that was really out of nowhere, but okay. Hang on to your coconuts, players. We're going back to the beach. Ever seen one of those 1950 surfer movies where the kids get up to neato fun before the big bonfire twist a thon and the bully kicks the sandcastle in the nerdy guy's face? Well, get ready to recreate one. Two challenges followed by a tiebreaker if necessary. Why not just have three challenges? and this feels totally redundant. So, grab your swimsuit. If the sandcastle thing goes down, make sure you're the kicker, not the kick E. Chef, do you think you're a vampire or something? I have to assume so, but newsflash, unlike vampires, you're not invisible to the cameras. Would you get a clue that everyone can see what you're doing right now? When did you guys move the beach to Antarctica? As some of you can see, we're actually in the shooting studio. And the AC's cranked because... All the cameras and lights get so hot, they could melt Chef's heart. And the network told my agent, sweaty wasn't a good look for me. Can you not just shoot this on that random beach set from earlier? Nine, 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 nine. Whatever you say. Your first challenge, hang ten this deck into the big blue without swallowing tail in the soup. What did you just ask me to do? Okay, that's an example of someone getting offended and it actually being funny. Mostly because it was something totally innocent and just happened to be taken the wrong way. That works great, provides not countered by something that could genuinely offend people later on. If I were into that trap. Given tonight's reward, you should be fighting harder than Justin's abs over who gets first shot. Oh! Oh, we have a volunteer! Yeah, if you get stabbed in the butt by a frozen square of Simlock in the shape of the Shazam logo... My legs! And because of this, Harold goes first. And please welcome the return of some Season 1 fan favorite. 
favorite, the sharks. Huh, so the room is cold enough to freeze sunblock, but not cold enough to freeze water? Yes, science! Hey, sharks, look! Bacon and bacon! Breakfast should last all day, no? I think they're confusing sharks for dolphins. A common mistake. Friendship bracelet? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah. Uh. Much better. And that was another example of Trent being a creepy level of weird, but admittedly, I still think it's better than being a cliche Joe's boyfriend like last episode, so progress? Whoa! It's a twister! It's a twister! Oh, my leg! The body's a beautiful thing, you don't need a suit. Even the sharks get put out of commission, but Chris has the next step of this creature for a beach movie, Seagull. Sorry. You went too far that time. That scene was funny, but is bestiality okay if it's the animal in love with the human? Oh my, I'm a fan of BoJack Horse. If I'm not asking that question in that show, I shouldn't be asking it here. Finally, we have Duncan. Oh my head! You gotta be kidding me! Oh, my legs! What? I ran out of stuff to throw. So Duncan wins despite several people not doing the challenge, including Beth, Trent, Heather, and LaShawn. Makes about as much sense here as it did in Extreme Torture. None. Man, Gwen's team is unstoppable! We have to stop them. With what? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Excuse me? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, your secret weapon's being weird? If being weird brings us good luck, then yeah, I'm weird. Besides, Gwen likes weird. I hate to sound freaked out and paranoid, but Trent, are you okay? No, 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 no. Okay, I've got a big problem if I have dead dick hairs interrupting my videos. So Chris truthfully promises to take the cast to an actual beach this time. Again, that beach set in the film law is apparently out of the question. Yes, campers, we're actually back at your old stomping grounds. Total Drama Island! If you need to take a moment and reminisce about the great times you had here... <laughs> Fine, we'll skip the good memories montage. Good, another funny scene, I can work with this. Screaming gaffers, you've got a 30 minute head start on the sandcastle building contest. I really don't want the tiebreaker to have to go down. Don't think legal's quite approved it yet. Approved? I doubt your legal team understands it. The tiebreaker is just getting crushed by a rock? And the structure that held up the rock? And them Duke boys, again, I'm into the genre, but what does any of this have to do with beach movies? DJ, wet or sand in that bucket. Lashana, pack it firmer. Hang tan this deck into the big blue without swallowing tail in the soup. What did you just ask me to do? Okay, that's an example of someone getting offended and it actually being funny. Mostly because it was something totally innocent and just happened to be taken the wrong way. That works great, provided it's not countered by something that could genuinely offend people later on. <laughs> If I were into that trap. Wet or sand in that bucket. Lashana, pack it firmer. Ugh. Look, I know Harold meant the sand, but still, don't ever use the words pack it firmer around ladies unless you're okay with not having a place to pee. Did Duncan and Gwen go to get more buckets? <laughs> there. If we're stuck at the beach, at least we can stay in the cabins. I've always been more of a dismantler than a builder anyway. Uh, why are Gwen and Duncan pulling this stunt? No, seriously, why? Is it just for the sake of being troublemakers? I mean, it made sense in basic straining for Duncan to keep doing that. He thought it was funny and he didn't care about the consequences afterwards. But here, you're gonna be stuck at your old campgrounds that you clearly don't miss. If you need to take a moment and reminisce about the great times you had here... <laughs> No, you just love to stir up the stuff. I was gonna say stuff. Uh, we 
you should disconnect the horn too. A little late for that hindsight. Trick, dude. Get Castlin. We need a plan. And I've got one. Cool, Trent being a true leader and taking charge. That's something admirable and a great character trait to have. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Nine turrets, nine doors. Justin, add one more moat. So we have nine? Quickly dethroned by this nine obsession. Yeah, you've all noticed this too. Trent seems to have this creepy fascination with the number nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Remember, nine of everything. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine moats, nine flags. <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine. Are you nuts? Now I only have eight pieces left. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, five six, six, seven, seven eight, eight, nine. Nine wicked jam rooms. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dude, even Count Von Count does not care about the number nine this much. Now we have a we just need eight more. How far does this obsession with that number go? Our cat's his favorite animal for having nine lives? Is his favorite movie the animated film nine? Okay, that would make sense. This episode came out a few months before that film did. In the year 2009. <laughs> Look, I'm obsessed with a lot of things, but the number nine is not one of them. <laughs> Maybe, but I've been pretty restrained until now. This is the first I've shown any sign of compulsion. Hey, you're right! For all the times he talks about the number 9 in this episode, there's been absolutely no mention of it in any episode prior. So if he's so fond of this number, why is this the first time it's ever been brought up? I guess Trent's been slowly but surely becoming more unhinged since being eliminated last season that his downward spiral is finally reaching an end. At least he has no other major obsessions we need to worry about. I dub thee... Casa Gwen. Now he's naming buildings after me? I think Trent might be obsessed. Oh yeah, his obsession with Gwen is getting uncomfortable too. Like, Cody uncomfortable. In fact, Cody is legitimately the person I'd feel safer shipping Gwen with than Trent. Yeah, Cody, the guy who, oh, how'd I put it? Sniffed your hair and wanted to pawn your underwear off you. Oh, right. At least he was up front with his creepiness and it wasn't hidden under some safe inviting surface. Unlike Trent whose behavior feels way too much like that of a horror movie villain. Dude, stop at three. Stop at five. Just, just stop. You can't support so much weight. <laughs> <laughs> just back away. Wheel slow. Also, at least Cody got better as the season progressed. He accepted being friend zoned. I guess it's not clear if he and Gwen are friends at all, but at least she doesn't hate him. I was lucky enough to meet five people who are actually sane. He helped Gwen and Trent get together, and even after being voted out, wished Gwen goodwill because he just wanted to see her happy. I think Gwen should win. Really? But she rejected you on international TV. Thanks for pointing that out, Lindsay. Gwen is my dream girl. I'm just not her dream guy. But as long as She's happy. Hey, I'm happy. Trent, however, went from bland but comforting while saying a bunch of stupid shit to Gwen. You know, you're totally the last person here I'd leave buried in the sand if I had a choice. To believing lies from Gwen's worst enemy without asking his girlfriend about it. To professing his love for her on national TV. Yeah, that'll look uncomfortable on playbacks. To being jealous of her again for stupid as hell reasons. And now to this horrible obsession of both Gwen and his favorite number nine. At least his number nine obsession is even worse than the me one. Four letters in your name, five letters in Trent's, put them together and you get... Nine! He can't be doing everything nine times just for me! Coincidence? Almost certainly. Trent is so off the rails he makes Arthur Fleck look stable! Holy shit, I am writing this down. I mean, if Joker can make around a billion dollars at the box house, I can make bank with a character this disturbed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Could say you've uh, sent him to cloud nine. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a mummy that makes Courtney scream for her mommy. Get it? It's almost the same word! Well, it's good to know that his tendency to make terrible puns at the age of four stuck with him into his mid-teens. Just one more flag. Oh, it's over. What if I tie these bracelets around the towers to keep them up? It's a sandcastle building contest, Beth. No, it's a prop sandcastle building contest. Anything goes. Okay, Spores, the many bookmarks I've been putting when Beth is on screen being nice are all an indicator of a big problem I have with her character this season. However, this scene where she takes over for Trinity General Custer style leadership is definitely one of her better moments. It displays her quirky and innovative side and shows she's willing to think outside the box in this show's wonky ass challenge rules. So full props, but I'm bummed to Beth for that, but the problems I'll talk about with her in the future will still stand. But whatever, due to an accident, the gaffers lose and the tiebreaker must commence, which gives Trent more time to talk things over with Gwen. Are you carrying nine sticks? Of course, it's my lucky number. Listen, Trent, I'd love to stay in chat, but I really gotta go focus on the game right now. What am I doing wrong? Getting in her way. 
Like I said before, the girl likes winning. Not sure when he said those words exactly, but regardless, it gives Trent an idea for later in the challenge. The tie-breaking challenge. A Watuzi twist mashed potato dorky old school dance contest. You've got to pick me. My nickname back home? Lush. Taking it. I vote for Trent. We heard you got some fly moves. Okay, I'll do it. You know, LaShawn's dancing would be fine if they just cut with this music. My anaconda don't, my anaconda don't, my anaconda don't want none unless you got buns, hun. The thing is, if Gwen wants to win, why is it unethical for me to help her? I'm Trent first and a killer grip second. What? Did you just say? I'm Trent first and a killer grip second. 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 Okay, Trent's not only lost all dignity in my opinion, but he's lost any respect I might have had for him throughout the entire show, which is practically none to begin with. I'm sorry, but that statement offends me as a lover of reality shows. But to be clear, only as a lover of reality shows. There's nothing scandalous or disgraceful about Trent's character outside of that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For the most part. But yeah, he wants to throw challenges now to impress his girlfriend. The thing is, if Gwen wants to win, why is it unethical for me to help her? Because you're letting the rest of your team suffer for your own selfish end. Which, by the way, are moronic by themselves, because how is it in this story of the dashing, good-looking, cool musician and the loner secluded guy that the cool guy is the pathetic loser trying to impress the other. If it's being done to subvert cliches, that'd be cool if the means where he needed to impress her were built up over a long period of time, but this behavior seems like it's only just begun. So it feels like Trina's just jumping to conclusions. But beyond that, I've got a major, major problem with people throwing challenges in reality shows, or at least in Survivor. In Big Brother it often fares better, but even there it has times where that strategy majorly backfires on people. My strategy going into this competition is to throw it I have the results by a vote of five four Godfrey you are safe yeah, baby! But yeah, I've noticed that nearly every time a person or team has thrown a challenge in Survivor, if not every time, it leads to bad luck happening to those contestants. Whether it be losing an ally down the line, going on a losing streak, or just getting voted out immediately. Now, sometimes the winners of the season can come from the group that threw the challenge, but the cons outweigh the pros normally in this instance. I guess as much as I hate it, the one upside is it usually leads to someone with their ego inflated more than a hot air balloon losing in the end. Except, I don't get that satisfaction here because it's only a reward challenge, so I still have to put up with this crap for at least another episode. But if it's only a reward challenge, why should I care? Because it's a principle and I have to stand by it or else I thought I'd disrespect the things I love in the process. Get your head out of your ass, Trent! Oh, oof! Oh, I think I have turned my ankle. Do something! Uh, uh, Look, he's floundering as a dancer, game player, and boyfriend. Again, Cody is better than you right now. Cody! I ignored Trent and now he's lost his will to go on. I like Trent a lot, but I don't want to be responsible for this much mental distress. Gwen, trust me, this isn't your fault at all. And the writers trying to put any of this blame on you is manipulative and disgusting. I've had my problems with Gwen, but they shouldn't amount to Gwen having mental stress like this put on her. Mm. Are you saying Gwen's stress comes from somewhere else? Mm. And where does Trent's behavior come from? Check and mate. It results in the gappers winning, Gwen and Trent reconciling again, this is starting to feel repetitive, and Beth and Justin kinda sorta forming an alliance. Thanks for winning us the sandcastle contest, especially since I blew the surfing challenge. You really saved my bacon. Or should I say, faking. <laughs> Except, I kinda noticed you gave everyone on the team friendship bracelets. Everyone but me. Aren't we friends, Beth? Here. This doesn't really amount to anything, but it does give more of Justin trying to be a charming manipulator. I'm okay with that. Because he doesn't exactly get any better from that. Ooh, Beth, I love it. I was thinking, Beth, it could be really good for us if we were in an alliance. Wow, dude is as crafty as he is good looking. Maybe we're related. <laughs> he wishes. Uh, no, Chris. 
No, I don't. Justin has eyes everywhere. He can see y'all. Which one of you geniuses left the two-way mic on? Oh, bullshit. This episode anyway was complete bullshit. Otherwise, the rest of it was pretty good. Yeah, I don't hate this episode as much as I was laying on. Oh, I do hate major parts of it, all centered around Trent, whose declining character is rivaling Mooshu's from Mulan 2. Okay, let's not get carried away. But his scary fascination with the number 9 is desperate attempts to keep Gwen, his mentality of throwing challenges for a girl. I despise everything about where this character is gone. But for an episode centered around a movie genre I have no knowledge of, it actually kind of pleasantly surprised me. Decent jokes and challenges, and I guess I did get my wish that Trent went from boring and plan the first season to literally anything else here. Shows you gotta be careful what you wish for. Did the pros outweigh the cons here? Only barely, I'm afraid. Between being a 9 out of 10 and a... Nine, 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 nine. This one for me is a solid 6. But yeah, I hate how Trent's character has devolved so thoroughly. He went from being forgettable to me wanting to forget him. How is that even possible? Yeah, for you to give me back my costume, you thief. How'd you handle my cloak mask in sight? This isn't your size. Wait, isn't that the rejuvenator from- <laughs> You wanted to forget. Wish granted. Got it.